Hey Woody, console collector here. For today's video, we're going to talk about CRTs. Yes, the good old big heavy tube TVs. I'm really fortunate to have some great CRTs in my game room. I love the look and the feel and the sound of just the classic CRT televisions, so I want to make a video about all the ones in the game room. Being a retro gamer at heart, I really think that the old consoles are best played on a period correct television. That's why I have so many great CRTs because I want to get that authentic experience while playing classic video games. With that said, most of these consoles were designed with CRTs in mind. That was the current technology at the time of their creation, so I feel like that's the best way to play them and get the best picture. Don't get me wrong, you can play retro games on a modern LCD or LED TV. I just personally don't think it looks as good as a CRT. So how many CRTs do I have exactly? I have 11 CRTs in my retro room, which is this room you're looking at now. I have 13 total in the game room, and then 18 if I include my kiosks. So we're going to dive in and take a look at each CRT one by one. Before I do, I just want to do a little bit of a disclaimer. Now, CRTs, as you know, don't work really well on camera. So you see flickering and the image is kind of distorted. That doesn't happen in real life. That's strictly because CRTs don't really like being recorded. I wanted to add, stay tuned to the end of the video, because after we're done looking at all my regular CRTs, I thought it'd be kind of cool just to include the CRTs in the kiosks as kind of a quick little bonus. All right, with that out of the way, we're going to take a look at my very first CRT, and we're going to start off with one that was from my childhood. This is a Hitachi 13-inch CRT from March 1981. The model number is CT1302. This little CRT is very special to me because it's the exact same model I had when I was a kid. We had it set up on a little stand and the NES on top, and that's just how we would play games. That's why I've kind of recreated that in my retro room. I should mention this isn't the exact TV from when I was a kid, but again, it's the same model. I actually came across this CRT years ago from my local retro video game store. They had one just sitting in there, and I talked to the owner, and I said, Oh man, this is my childhood CRT. Can I please buy it? And normally he doesn't sell these retro TVs, but he really hooked me up and sold it to me for a great price. Honestly, this is one of my favorite CRTs in the game room, just strictly for nostalgic reasons. Honestly, this is probably one of the worst looking CRTs in the game room. I don't mean the nice wood grain finish on the outside. I mean the actual picture. It's not great, but it's straight out of the 80s and it's total retro nostalgia for me. I got to give this little guy some credit though. The sound is great from that little mono speaker. Another thing I really like about this is just the old school dials to change the channels. You just don't see that anymore. This CRT is playing Journey to Silas. It's kind of a hidden gem. I recently discovered this game and it's really awesome. It was originally a Terminator game, but the licensing fell through and it became its own thing. And it's just a really great game that I highly recommend. So I had to put it on this CRT for this video. This next CRT we're going to take a look at is one of the most unique CRTs in my game room. This CRT is the Samsung GXE from June 1997. It's a little 13 inch CRT and the model number is GXE1395. Now what makes this CRT unique is it has doors. Yes, little doors, like a window. They open up to reveal two speakers. And that is the main awesome thing about this CRT is the sound. Aside from the door speakers, it actually has a built in mini subwoofer as well. So this thing just really pounds with the sound great sound unfortunately i find the image not the best but it definitely makes up for that with the great sound i'm really fortunate i got one of these i used to see it online and think wow i'd really love that crt and when the chance came up to get one i snatched it no regrets right now the samsung gxe is playing one of my favorite tv shows ever home improvement i hung this crt on a crt wall mount it kind of gives it that in-store display feel I find and it's a real eye catcher when people walk into my retro room they're like whoa what is that and I open up the doors and reveal it's actually a little CRT again definitely one of the most unique and cool looking CRTs in my game room these next two CRTs are the little theme TVs I used to have a big collection of these theme TVs but honestly, I lost interest in them. Like, I had my Shrek CRT that I sold to Ricky Berwick, and it kind of just went down from there. After I got rid of Shrek, I realized, you know what? I'm just not feeling these anymore. However, I did keep these two. We have a Lightning McQueen one here on the left, and then a Batman one on the right. And the Batman one actually has the matching DVD player. 
Some of the other themed CRTs I had were the Mickey Mouse one, Disney Princesses, Spider-Man, Superman. Yeah, pretty cool themes and definitely eye catchers. But overall quality of them is bad. Like the picture's not great, the sound isn't great. They're definitely just for looks. They were aimed for kids, like having little CRTs in your kids' room. These CRTs are definitely cheaply made. For instance, my car's one has a built-in DVD player, and half the time it doesn't even want to read the disc. They're just really poor quality overall. But they're not all bad, like the car's one there, look at the eyes just looking around, it's just really cool. That's just a standby screen. So they do have a lot of cool features, again, they're just not practical for actually using. So you can see that nothing is playing on the Cars one because the DVD player decided not to work when I was filming. But I am running Are You Afraid of the Dark on the Batman one. It's still going strong. And finally on these two, I unfortunately do not have the model numbers. Someone had ripped the stickers off. Up next, this is personally one of my other favorites in the game room. It's a 1980s wood grain console CRT. Unfortunately, I don't have a lot of info about this one. Again, when I got it, the serial number had actually just been faded off. They had a piece of paper stapled to the back of it, and it was just faded completely. The ink was gone on it. So I'm not sure of the model number. I've never really seen another console Hitachi TV like this before, but it's really nice straight out of the 80s. Just watching it, you get this total 80s vibe. When I watch anything basically pre-90s on VHS, even some DVDs, I love to watch it on this TV just because it takes you right back to the 80s. I got my cool little wood themed lamp there. You know, it's just something about sitting in front of this and watching some classic 80s movies just takes you right back to the 80s. You can see here I'm running Friday the 13th on it, part three, one of the best Friday the 13th. Typically when I'm in the mood for something 80s, I just love to put my big beanbag in front of this chair, lay down, turn on the little lamp, and play or watch something on it. It really just feels like you're back in the 80s. I can't explain it. It's really awesome. So what I have hooked up to this CRT is actually several things. I have a DVD slash VHS player combo on it. And for gaming systems, I actually have an old Atari Pong console hooked up to it. I have my Intellivision and of course the Atari 2600. I believe the first generation of gaming was just made for these kind of CRTs. And I love playing Pong or some Intellivision or even E.T. on a 1980s CRT. It's great when people come over and they're like, hey, let's play some Pong. And we just sit down, huddle around this little CRT, just like the old days. The kids crowded around the big old TV having fun. It really is just a nostalgic trip back to the 80s. And if you're into that kind of gaming in that era, I really think you should get one of these console TVs because... There's nothing quite like it. Of course, the picture quality is not great, but the sound's decent. It's just period correct, like I said, and it's quite the enjoyment. I have tried some NES games and Super Nintendo games on here, and honestly, they don't look that great. They just weren't made for this CRT, so I use something a little more modern for that stuff. Up next, we're going to take a look at this Toshiba HD CRT. What does that mean? It means it's a high definition CRT. This is a 30 inch Toshiba theater wide HD CRT. The model number is 30HF83C. It was produced in July of 2003. Now, HD CRTs I've noticed have been growing in popularity. These CRTs have a real good purpose. They don't necessarily look the best for things like the Genesis or the Super Nintendo, things like that. They actually look great, in my opinion, for anything that's basically sixth generation and up. So I'm talking GameCube, Dreamcast, PS2, and then even the Xbox 360 and the PS3. The thing about these HD CRTs is, yeah, they're high definition. So if you're running component cables, some of these guys can output up to 1080i. Yeah, that's crazy. So you get a really nice picture on some of these HD CRTs. This particular CRT is actually my friend Phantom Link's favorite one in the retro room. We like to do Left 4 Dead LAN parties, and he always grabs this one. The picture quality on it is just beautiful. You would think it was HDMI running at 1080p. That's how great it looks. But honestly, it's just running 1080i through component cables. So yeah, looks awesome. Just real quick, you might see that little GE Spacemaker CRT beside the Toshiba. 
It's not currently hooked up to anything. I only wanted to feature CRTs that are hooked up in the game room. I do have a couple of odd CRTs here and there that aren't hooked up that I'm not going to cover in this video. I have to mention the sound output on this thing. With the normal speakers and the built-in subwoofer, the sound on this thing is just incredible. Finally, the CRT is running Left 4 Dead 2. Again, I mentioned we love doing LAN parties, so of course I had to have Left 4 Dead 2 running for this video. Aside from the Xbox 360, I'm also running my Sega Genesis Model 2, Sega CD Model 2, and the 32X on this HD CRT. Next, we're going to take a look at this behemoth. This is the largest CRT in my game room, and it was the largest and heaviest CRT I've ever moved in my entire life. This is the mighty 36-inch Sony XBR. This thing is a beast. The model number is KV36XBR800, and it was produced in November of 2002. Where do I start on this XBR? It's huge, it's beautiful, it's awesome, and I have the matching stand. The picture on this thing? Amazing. The sound on this thing? Amazing. This really is one of the best CRTs I have. Now, spoiler alert, it's not my favorite, but it's definitely one of the best performing. I've heard such great things about XPRs over the years, and I'm like, I'm going to get one eventually when they come up. And I was so lucky, this one actually went up, and it was 100% free. But I may not have spent money, but oh boy, did I work for this thing. Me and my buddy, Phantom Link, moved this thing into the retro room, and again, it was the heaviest CRT we ever moved. It was literally backbreaking. Like, I can't explain what a behemoth this thing is. But again, it was totally worth it. I have to give Phantom Link a shout out in this CRT video because he's always there for me when I need help with these beasts. He's helped move every single one of these CRTs in this game room. So I can't thank him enough because these are two-man jobs at the minimum. And sometimes it's a three-man job, but hey... Me and him got it done, just the two of us. But hey, enough about moving the CRTs, let's talk about the actual CRT. This XBR has a ton of great features, but one of my favorite things on it is this dual picture mode. As you can see here, you can run two different consoles on one screen. So on the left, I'm running the PS3, and then on the right, I'm running my 3DO. So that means you can literally play two different games on the CRT at the same time. Kind of gives a whole new aspect to split screen, right? I have to say the sound on this XBR is phenomenal, just like all the other big CRTs I have in the game room. Something about these really high-end expensive CRTs, they all have great pictures and great sound. The thing is though, it only runs sound on the one you're selected to, so you could just basically maybe watch a movie while playing a game in silent. I don't really know what this feature was for, but it's cool nonetheless. I remember when I got this CRT and everyone I talked to on forums and groups were like, wow, you got like the Ferrari of CRTs. Everyone was super jealous. Apparently this is most people's dream CRT and I truly feel fortunate to have one and the fact that I got it for free. This is actually my newest CRT to the game room. When I did my big game room tour last year, I didn't even have this one. So I'm really happy that I can share this brand new XBR with you guys. So what do I have running to this beautiful Sony XBR CRT? Well, I have my backwards compatible PS3. It's there on the left here. You can see the chrome trim. And then I have my Star Wars edition Xbox 360. And both of those look absolutely great on this XBR. They're both running component cables. Well, that's what I love about these as well. It has dual component inputs. I'm also running my Sega Saturn on this. My top loader Panasonic 3DO and my Philips CDI 910. And finally, I have a Game Wave running on the XBR as well. It's sitting on top. I don't really use it much. It's basically just there as a region-free DVD player. So the Game Wave, the 3DO, the CDI, and the Saturn are all running composite inputs. Let's talk about my main gaming CRT. This is a 30-inch Sony HD CRT. The model number is KV. 30HS510. It was produced in October of 2003. This is one of the rare widescreen Sony CRTs. So yeah, it's an oddball size of 30 inches and it's widescreen. This thing supports up to 1080i, has dual component inputs, it has a total of 7 inputs. This thing is just amazing. 
if you can already tell, this is one of my favorite CRTs in the game room. And honestly, it's probably my favorite TV in the game room. Like, I prefer this thing over my Samsung 4K TV. Like, this CRT truly is just amazing. The picture, the sound, like, I have no complaints on this thing. I'm really lucky that I have matching stand for it as well. I could honestly go on and on and on about this CRT. It really is just that amazing. I was so lucky I actually got this thing with the matching stand for 30 bucks on Facebook Marketplace right when I first bought this house. And I was so excited to get it home. I was truly blown away at the quality of this CRT. Pretty much anytime I want to play anything 6th generation and newer, I jump right to the CRT. Honestly, nothing beats it. You know, especially GameCube. My GameCube is running component cables on this CRT. Yeah, the mighty rare component cables are on this CRT. And there is no better way to play GameCube, in my opinion, than on this particular Sony CRT. Now, you guys might be saying, oh, you can get one of those HDMI adapters for a modern TV. Honestly, junk. Crap. I hate those. I have the GameCube hooked up to my Samsung QLED, and I hate it. It looks awful. I will not play GameCube on there unless I have to. I play all my GameCube games on this CRT. Again, nothing beats it. This is just the perfect way. Nothing's better than GameCube on this CRT. You guys know how much I love GameCube. So just really, GameCube needs to be played through component cables on this CRT. I really can't think of a better combination. But let's move on. So what do I have hooked up to this CRT? Through component cables, I have, like I mentioned, the GameCube, which that's my very first GameCube I ever bought. That's my childhood one. I bought it with my own money when I was a teenager, and I've kept it all these years. So that's hooked up to it through component. And then I have a Halo 4 edition Xbox 360 for our Left 4 Dead LAN parties. That's hooked up through component as well. And wow, the picture on Xbox 360. I honestly think it looks better on this CRT than the 4K as well. It does that 1080i output and just looks awesome. I also have my Dreamcast hooked up to it just through regular composite and then the original Xbox through composite as well. I would love to do component for all of those. I've tried component splitters. It just doesn't look as good with the split signal. So unfortunately those are just composite, which still look pretty good, honestly. I got no complaints with that. I wish there was more component inputs, but this thing only has two component inputs. And then, of course, on the far right, I just have a standard fat PS2 hooked up through composite. So just like the XBR, this thing has a ton of features, has built-in subwoofer, has really great sound, and it also does the twin picture mode, as you can see. Yep, you can do the same splitting thing here. It's awesome. It's really cool just to put on two different games at once. It's really just a, a conversation piece, kind of an eye-catcher, really unique. Next up, well, what's this? No, you're not seeing double. Yes, this is another Sony HD widescreen CRT. Yes, that's right. I have two of them. I call them my twins. I love these TVs so much that, yes, I have two. This is the 30-inch model number KV30HS510. Identical CRTs. How do I have two? I don't even know. I got lucky. This CRT currently only has an Xbox 360 hooked up to it through component cables for the Left 4 Dead 2 LAN parties. Now we're on to another great CRT. This is a 32 inch Sony Trinitron model number KV32FV300. It was produced in November of 2002. In my opinion, this is the Lamborghini or the Ferrari of CRTs for true retro gaming. So anything PS1, N64 previous, I'm talking about Genesis, Turbo Graphics, Super Nintendo, NES, all that stuff looks absolutely great on this CRT. This CRT has great scan lines, has the wow true sound subwoofer built in, just pure awesome CRT. Now if you are a CRT enthusiast like myself, you may know what this is. This is definitely a highly sought after and much desired CRT. However, with that said, there's something I have to bring up. Yes, this is the 300 Sony Trinitron, but there is this other model, which is known as the 310. And apparently it has a better component inside that makes things look even better. 
I don't have a 310 to compare it to, but honestly, in my opinion, I'm super happy with this 300. I know someone that has a 310 and he had this 300 and he hooked me up with this 300 and he said, you know, side by side, they're virtually the same. Like there really isn't a huge difference in them. So I am perfectly content with this 300. This is definitely my go-to CRT for anything retro. So what I have hooked up to it, I have my TurboGrafx-16, which is running the Turbo Booster Plus, so I get composite out. I'm running my Super Nintendo, which I actually have S-Video hooked up on this. Then I have a PlayStation 1 on composite. And then I have my Sega Genesis on composite. And then I have an N64 on composite slash S-Video. I can do both on that one. Then I have an Xbox 360, which of course is for the LAN parties. And then I have my blue Wii, which is running component on it. Now, since we're on this CRT, I just want to quickly mention that I actually have some composite cables running from this CRT because it has this really cool feature of video out. So basically anything displayed on the screen, you can have a video out and you can run dual screens. I have that second video signal actually running all the way across the retro room up to my Samsung GXE CRT, the one with the folding open doors. So that allows me to play any of these consoles on that GXE as well, since I only have a DVD player hooked up to the GXE on its own normally. It's really cool actually, because I can just have a console on this CRT, like Super Mario Kart here, and then people walk in and see Super Mario Kart playing on the GXE as well. And it really just gives that store demo feel so finally, I just really love this Sony Trinitron 300. Anything with just pixels looks great on it. Those scan lines are just beautiful. So definitely, if you need a great CRT for retro gaming, I highly recommend the Sony Trinitron 300s or if you can get that 310. But again, like I was told, there isn't a huge difference between the two. I think this 36 300 just looks absolutely great for the retro stuff. Now we have this little 20 inch Toshiba CRT. The model number is 20AF45C. It was produced in December of 2005. Honestly, I was so impressed with this little guy. I did not expect this little Toshiba to have such a great video picture. The sound is awesome on it too, but for a little 20 inch, this is just a really great CRT. I currently have an Xbox 360 hooked up to it through component cables, again for the Left 4 Dead 2 LAN parties. So this little guy is the go-to CRT for my older kid. He always jumps on this one when we play Left 4 Dead 2 LAN parties. Just look at that picture. It really is so nice running those component cables. I find stuff looks even better on smaller TVs, especially on the CRTs, because it's not all stretched out. Just really looks great. Everyone always talks about how great Sony Trinitrons are for CRTs, and I agree, they are great. However, I'm really impressed with these Toshiba CRTs, whether it's a small one like this or an HD CRT from Toshiba. I think they're great contenders for some of the best CRTs out there for retro gaming. All right, so that's it for the CRTs in the retro room. I know it looks like a lot of CRTs in this one room, but that's the way I designed it. We love to have these Left 4 Dead 2 LAN parties, and there's nothing better than just getting a group of friends together in here all, all at once and just playing some Left 4 Dead 2 all on our own TVs. It's a ton of fun, and I wish I could just express how great it is to do these LAN parties on our own CRTs. So let's head out to the rest of the game room and see what CRTs I have out there. All right, so we're out in my rental store area of the game room, and up top on display, I have this little Panasonic 13 inch. Now, I got this one at a secondhand store, and of course, it had no model number on it, so I can't give that to you, unfortunately. But I do know it's a Panasonic 13 inch. The picture on it is actually decent. It's okay. The sound is decent on it as well. It's not the best CRT, but I remember I got this for five bucks and I thought it's small enough where I could use it in my rental store section of the game room. I have it hung up on a little CRT wall mount and it definitely gives that video store rental kind of feel with a VHS tape. Just playing in the corner, showing what's hot and what's new. Alright, time to look at the last CRT in the game room that's not in a kiosk. This is a 14-inch Toshiba CRT. The model number is 14AF43 and it was produced in October of 2003. This CRT doesn't get a lot of use, but it fits in perfectly in this part of the game room. 
honestly it's pretty much the same as that last Toshiba we looked at the 20 inch it's just smaller it has the same overall design colors layout everything it really is just a smaller version of it this CRT is so cute it has such a great picture I actually just use it for my GameCube display yeah I got my full set in here and I thought it'd be really cool to just have a little CRT with the GameCube set kind of playing demo disc so that's what I use it for and it's perfect for it you can game on it it has a great picture it uh, has component in as well which is really rare for small TVs to have component in it's only a single component in but hey it still has it as well as the S video and the composite all right we're done with my normal CRTs now as promised let's take a look at some of my CRTs in my kiosks this one here is a little 13 inch guy it's in my Pokemon snap station I could get the model number off it, but it's bolted inside. So forgive me that the kiosks, I'm not going to share model numbers with. Of course, if you really want them, maybe I can get in there and get them for you. But just for now, let's just take a look at them for what they are. I do know that it's a tiny Samsung CRT in the Pokemon Snap Station. It definitely doesn't have the best picture, but it's for a demo unit. So it gets the job done. It's pretty standard stuff here. One thing about kiosk and demo CRTs is they typically ran all day in stores, so they usually have a lot of wear and tear on them. I'm sure this little Samsung CRT isn't going to last forever, but I'm fortunate that right now it's still going strong. This is my 7 foot in store Nintendo GameCube kiosk. This has a Dynaflat Samsung CRT. It has a nice black trim on it, really nice picture. This is my red gamecube kiosk we're taking a look at this is mine that is fully complete that i got from the toys r us manager this crt just works perfectly it matches with the dark tone of the whole kiosk great little crt and this is the stock or factory kiosk crt that came with it this is my other seven foot in-store nintendo gamecube kiosk this is the blue version kiosk that i have now this one actually has a silver samsung dynaflat crt this is how I got it. Now my red one is from Canada and this blue one is from the US. So I don't know if they use different CRTs between the two countries. However, this is just what it came with. So I'm assuming it's the one that's correct. They are both Samsung Dynaflats. So I just left it. It's still going strong, has great picture, great sound, really nice. I'm very lucky to have two GameCube kiosks like this. I just love them, they go hand in hand and yet they're different enough to stand out with the different CRTs in them and then the different colors. I just wanna say quickly how fortunate I am to have these two Nintendo GameCube kiosks with their matching CRTs. It just looks really great in my GameCube corner of the game room. Now we have my really awesome original Xbox kiosk. Now I got this kiosk it was beat up, dirty, and it was incomplete. It actually came with a CRT, but it was not the correct one. No, it had some junky old one, and I did some searching online, and it definitely was not the correct CRT. However, I did find a CRT that works really well with kiosks. I got some inspiration from the GameCube kiosks, and yes, I put in a Samsung Dynaflat in this original Xbox kiosk. It pretty much fit perfectly and it had component in so i got some nice component cables for this xbox so yes you're looking at a component in on this samsung dynaflat crt i really do think it looks great and fits the kiosk really well all right now the last crt technically in the game room and it is my n64 kiosk this is a rca true flat crt now when i got this Nintendo 64 kiosk it came with a CRT but the picture was trashed and it was no good and it was a round tube TV I really like the look of the flat CRTs so I had to find one that fit in this kiosk I originally wanted to put a Samsung Dynaflat in this CRT but I couldn't find one so I found this free true flat RCA CRT and it actually fits perfectly it gets the job done it's not a bad CRT it looks okay it works for my N64 kiosk. All right, so that's it. That's all the CRTs in my game room. I'm really happy I was able to showcase all the different CRTs in my game room. Like I mentioned before, I really think playing a console on a period correct CRT television is the best way to enjoy it. So you might be wondering, what is my favorite CRT in the game room? Is it the Behemoth, the Sony XBR? Maybe. 
Is it the really awesome Trinitron 300 with the scan lines? It's definitely a great TV. However, no, it's not those. Without a doubt, it's got to be my twins. The 30-inch Sony Trinitron HD CRTs, model number KV30HS510. Yes, that is my favorite CRT in the game room. And dare I say, it's my favorite TV in the game room. Yes, even over the modern 4K. Something about that CRT is just amazing. I love the GameCube on it with the component cables, the 360, even PS3s. Everything looks great on that CRT. Absolutely everything. Even the older stuff like Super Nintendo NES Genesis, it all works on that CRT. So, in my opinion, if you are going to go out and get any CRT, I would either get the Sony Trinitron HD CRT, my favorite, or I would go for the Trinitron 300 or even that 310. It's just really great CRTs. You can't go wrong with either one. And of course, that doesn't mean the rest of them are no good. You know, if you really want a really nice big CRT, you can't go wrong with the 36-inch XBR Trinitron as well. You know what? I actually love all my CRTs. It was tough to pick one. I do have to say the Sony Trinitron HD widescreen is the best. But heck, even if you want to get away from Sony, I would definitely say try out a Toshiba because they are great CRTs as well. I just want to say quickly thanks for hanging out and watching the CRT video. Do you guys have a favorite CRT? Is it one I have or is it one I don't have? What kind of CRTs do you guys like? And I'd also like to know what do you prefer? Do you prefer CRTs or are you okay with modern TVs for retro gaming? I have noticed that CRT gaming has been growing in popularity and I'm rarely seeing free ones anymore. Most ones I see now people want money for. So if you want to get a CRT, I think now's the time because if you sleep on it too long, once these CRTs are gone, they're gone. They're not making them anymore. So get out there and get a nice CRT and enjoy your retro gaming. All right, that's going to wrap up today's video. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and share. I'd really appreciate it. You can follow me on social media. The information is on screen now and in the description below. I want to thank everybody for watching. I am the console collector, and until the next video, happy gaming.